Hello, so today we have a fun one to go through. This is going to be lore accurate Wukong. <laughs> uh, I find it really funny. So uh, I end up just playing Wukong in a very like silly way. So this is my first augment choice here. Uh, we're going to break it down step by step and what I was doing. Uh, but basically level up is pretty bad because it's kind of hard to cap out your board. Shimmer scale essence is really, really good in a lot of cases. Um, just because it gives you so much gold, so it's really easy to play around certain lines. But a lot of times when you see Shimmer Scale, a lot of times you just play towards uh, Jinx Wukong. So that was my idea here. I just took it um, because it's going to get me a lot of gold generation early. That gives you a lot of potential to be very flexible. The more gold you have, the less uh, risk you have in randomly not hitting the right units that you want to hit. So what it does, it gives you a... Um, it gives you a Mogul's Mail, which you can put on your Wukong, and then it gives you a Shimmer Scale, as, uh, the um, Gambler's Blade, which um, the other Shimmer Scale item, which you can then put on your Jinx, which works for her because she really likes attack speed a lot of the time. Even after they, they, they fixed uh, Jinx so that she has um, proper scale on AD, you'll still find that in a lot of these lines, especially in these stally comps, um, having, what's it called? having attack speed is still really good on Jinx. So, Gwinsu is still pretty good on her in some cases, and so is some of the other items like uh, Runans and those type of things if you're playing around Jinx Wukong. So, you know, we're just getting straight into it because the VOD was a little bit messed up. I had to grab this from my stream because my recording didn't work for this particular VOD. So, we're starting this stage out pretty fast, so, you know, big info dump right away. Um, if you make sure, if you like my content, make sure to like and subscribe. This one won't be like, you know, this isn't something that I recommend everybody reproduce. This was mostly for fun, kind of. I was streaming and I had an opportunity to do something that looked a little bit silly, but I knew was also like reliable or somewhat stable, so it was still fun. This isn't like the max cap best way to play this board, uh, but we're gonna go through it. Uh, but basically, this game's kind of a mess. Uh, right now, I'm I want to angle towards Jinx and Wukong. I could upgrade this Kogma. I probably should. I think I'm just like concerned with how much gold I'm making right now, so I just want to make sure because Cog if I'm if I'm playing Kogma, uh, usually with Jinx, if you cap it out really high, you have Jinx three, Kogma three, and Wukong three. But um, I don't want to waste my gold here because I might want to sell my my bench units to make sure that I make twenty. So I want to see how much gold generation I make. I make one gold, and as you can see, I probably won't be able to make twenty, but I can sell these instead, which I should make twenty here. Oh my god, I sold this Kogma. I guess I'm just so committed to not playing Kogma. I found a Wukong. I guess I didn't commit to Wukong yet. Yeah, my items are really bad for Jinx. So I think I wasn't thinking about playing Kogma or Hunters or Jinx. So that's why I sold it. I was thinking of just playing like Viger Vex. Because you can put the Gambler's Blade on a Nami and it's okay. So I think I was angling Vex at that point. But then I hit a Wukong now. So I'm like, oh shit, I should have probably bought the Kogma. But anyways, uh, I'll break. I'll go now to the... Uh, where is it? Sorry. I'll go now to like the uh, stats so that I can show you, or the uh, team builder and the stats so I can show you what I mean by what I'm playing. So here we go. Let's go like this. So of my options, just Shimmer, uh, Shimmer Scale Essence. Uh, you'll see that the average is pretty high. And if you look at the play rate, a lot of the times you're playing like Olaf Jinx, right? You'll see that it does uh, surprisingly well with like playing around um, Preservers as well as Jinx and Wukong. Right, uh, just sorting. So that's usually the a board that you're trying to angle towards. So the board will look something like this. If you haven't seen it, I did a Jinx Wukong in a very traditional sense on this channel a little bit before. So um, if you want to see that, you can check it out. Uh, if not, you can, I'll just give you a brief overview right now. But basically, your board looks something like this for a while. So basically, you have Wukong as your solo frontline unit. Uh, when you have Wukong, you go for Wukong 3, and in terms of the items, you're typically going to stack Gargoyles on him. So a lot of times, I think the best items is like Gargoyle, Gargoyle, Redemption, or something like that. But the last item doesn't matter too much. Typically, you want 2 Gargoyle, and then like whatever item you can manage to make that's a frontline item is going to be good enough. Uh, Gargoyle gives you extra armor and match resist for every enemy targeting the holder. So a lot of the time, you will put it... You'll put the, the Wukong solo in the front line so as many units as possible start to target him so he gains a lot of armor. If you read Wukong's ability, his passive is that he gains 30% bonus armor and magic resist from all sources. So that means if you put the gargoyles and he gets a bunch from everybody targeting him, he's going to get 30% more because of his passive. So it works out really well This Wukong is unkillable. And what are you stacking that with? Preservers. So preservers, you're going to play Morgana. 
uh, Rakan, Bard, and Zillion, as many of the preservers as you can fit in. And then in terms of how you're going to do damage, because Wukong is unkillable, but he's not going to do that much. What you're going to play is you're going to play Jinx, Twitch, uh, and Olaf. I think the four hunter is more important than the preserver for the early game, so a lot of times your board on level 7 when you're re-rolling is going to look something like this, and then you can level for the additional preservers to cap out your board. Uh, but typically you're going to try and go for Jinx 3. Uh, typically, I think it's better just to go for Olaf 2 if you have items for Olaf, but if you have Kogma items and not Olaf items, then you can also go for Kogma 3 if it's uncontested, and it caps out pretty high. Uh, for Jinx, I think it's always like Gwinsu Runans. It's like Gwinsu Red Buff Runans, I think is always like good. I think it's still good on her, uh, but I think she's now really flexible with her items. But typically with this build, because you're stalling out the fight for so long, you just want the Jinx to stack up the Gwinsu, and then the Runans hits additional enemies, so she has a little bit of like an AoE thing going on, so it works out really well. And then Olaf, you can just build traditional Olaf items, or you can build tank items on Olaf. I find that you have a, I have a lot of success sometimes. For example, if I don't have a Last Whisper somewhere on my board, I can make Even Shroud, or I can even put a Redemption on the Olaf, because the Olaf will go to the front line, then it will proc Redemption's effect, which will help out the Wukong. So there's a lot of different options. Now, one thing that I didn't talk about is Spin to Win. This game's actually going to be a silly Spin to Win game, because I end up hitting it. Um, and I don't usually normally hit it, but typically with spin to win, it just makes it so that his ability uh, doesn't scale with armor, it scales with AD. So like the last part of his active ability, where it says like, you know, do a total of whatever physical damage to each adjacent enemy, that part now scales with AD. So typically if you're going spin to win Wukong, you basically just have to play Gargoyle, Gargoyle, um... Bloodthirster is like a common build, but you can also build like a Sterex, things that really scale up the, uh, the, um, AD is really good. Uh, and then, uh, Gargoyles is still good because Wukong's passive doesn't get erased, right? Only his active starts to stop scaling with, phys with, uh, armor and MR, but his passive still works. The passive for Druid, where he gains 30% bonus armor, so it still makes it really nice to have a Gargoyle or a main tank item on the Wukong. Uh, if you do look at the stats for, um, Augments, you'll see that Spin to Win is very, very strong, right? Uh, it has a very, very consistent top 4 percentage, averages above 4.0, um, or sorry, averages above, um, like, better than 4.5, right? Less than 4.5, so it's very, very good. It's very above average. And a lot of times when you get Spin to Win, it just gives you, like, a very easy mid-game. It gives you two Wukongs, and your strongest Wukong now sk scales and does an extra attack speed. So it works out really well, because a lot of times you're only taking this when you already have some Wukongs to spare. So, if you look at it back to my game, uh, basically we made it to neutrals, I have two Wukongs, uh, I got my Gambler's Blade, I ran into a bit of a problem, I didn't really get items that work with Jinx that well, right? I had this JG, I could, I didn't really get any bows, right? So I couldn't make a Runet, I couldn't make a Gwinsu, I couldn't make a Last Whisper, so what am I doing here? Uh, I'm deciding to play around Viger with Wukong. Now, Viger with Wukong is not as good. It's definitely way worse, but it is something that you can play, and I'll talk about it in a second. I just want to show the augment choice because we're going to see what we hit on the augment, and then I'll go back to the board and I'll tell you about something else you can play. Uh, Spin to Win is just so broken. Uh, you should never really pass up on it. There's many options of different boards to play around with Spin to Win, um, and I'll show you the other renditions of playing around Wukong uh, as we get there. Yeah, so I hit spin to win. Uh, I'm going to take spin to win. Uh, it's, it's really good. I already have two Wukongs. This gives me another couple Wukongs. So it's like, yeah, you can even see my chat's going Lamal because it's like fucking like Jesus Christ. Like, it's so high roll. But anyways. Uh, if we go back to team builder. So let's say you have a Wukong. Uh, something, that's not, uh, something that you might not know is that like, even if you have a Wukong here, um, when you're playing mages... Uh, when you're playing mages, let's just put in all the mages, you have an empty spot a lot of the time, right? So this is a level 7 board, for example. And as you can see, I only have 6 units in. So, uh, with mages, a lot of times you have like a plus 1 spot on level 7. A lot of times you're playing Xerath if you hit it for Arca Arcana, right? So if you hit Arcana with Xerath, you usually like pair the Arcana, and then you have like a board like this with mages. You can play Wukong very easily with this board if you have a lot of Wukongs and it's uncontested. Typically, you're itemizing your Vex, but this also works, right? You just play the same board. It's not that good, but it is possible because of how easy it is to stabilize around mages. This might have been in the previous patch as well, so mages were a little bit stronger. Uh, don't take my word for it. Actually, no, I think it was in the most recent patch 
this 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 vod exactly uh from when i downloaded but just but just to let you know like this is another option the more reliable option but it's a lot riskier i find is to play around uh karma so you can play karma with preservers pretty easily this is like a common line because you just fit in chrono for free so you play something like this and then you can dual carry the karma with a another ap unit a lot of times you just play karma nami and then you play like one extra mage unit and you kind of make it work out so you can easily play something like this on your board uh the reason i like typically it'll be something like you know mordekaiser and uh galio Right, I don't know the board exactly, I'm sure there's some very optimal way to play this. But you'll play something like this on level 8, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, you probably drop one preserver or whatever. You know, it's not it's not that important, and usually you just find a way to fit in another mage. And you can play Wukong with the preservers, and then you play Karma in the back line. Oh wait, sorry, 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 sorry. I remember now, it's like this. You play this, and then Cassiopeia. Yeah, this is the board. And then you don't have to, then, then your last unit doesn't really matter that much. But you play Cassiopeia for Encanter. But basically, you can play Preserver with Wukong. And this board's really hard to play, in my opinion, because it's hard to hit Wukong 3. Because if you're going to try and play around Karma and you want to play around all these Preservers, you really want to be on level 8 uh, to hit these units. Or else, you like, you know, it's hard to say, like, oh, I'm going to carry Karma with AP items because I have Wukong and spin to win. And then you might just, like, you might half ass both solutions, right? You don't, won't have enough gold to hit Wukong 3. And then you might not stabilize around the Karma and the Preservers. So you just run yourself into, like, a bad spot. So I don't prefer this line as much. So in the game that I'm playing, I'm probably going to end up playing mages just because I'm super comfortable with it. So as you can see here, I'm structuring my board to play around mages instead of karma. I understand that karma is very good. Um, and that's a, another viable line, especially if you don't get items for jinx. Uh, the reason I'm showing you guys is obviously because I believe in that line and it is very strong. The reason I'm not playing it in this video, though, is because I think I already had, like, a good spot for mages. I had good Viger items, because Viger items are pretty much the same as Karma items for the most part. And because I have this Gambler's Blade, I kind of want to play around Nami, and I can easily just, like, stabilize around Nami if I don't play Viger. Uh, but rolling for Viger, you roll on level 7, so you have a really good opportunity to, um, to stabilize your board uh, very, very, in a very strong way. Um... On level 7 instead of having to roll on level 8 odds and I kind of wanted to roll on level 7 because I care so much about this Wukong so anyways now that we're done with all like the little intro aspects of talking about all the plans and what we're playing around the comp as you can see here I make a bloodthirster so I already have this uh, shimmer scale item which is really good it gives a bunch of extra armor which works really well with the Wukong so I'm just trying to like you know because I'm live on stream I'm trying to cook up a board here to make sure that it works out really well um, also, it looks like somebody else is playing Hunters in the form of this guy, so I think even if I tried to play Jinx, I would have been contested, so I'm, I'm really glad that I'm just playing around uh, Viger Vex. So I'm rolling here just for some level of stabilization, right? Uh, even a single Viger is good, because I can uh, stabilize my items a little bit better, then I can put the Nami, and Gambler's been on Nami isn't that bad. Uh, I think she's, she doesn't, she, obviously like Gwinsu and attack speed items aren't like the greatest on, um on Nami, but she does do okay with them. She's an okay holder of them. So it's not that bad. I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And now I feel kind of stable. I, I would like to roll until at least I hit Viger 2, and then I can kind of chill for the rest of the stage. But I'm very rich, by the way, right? You have to understand this roll down is a level 7 roll down at 3-6. So it's not even like 4-1. I'm just trying to like stabilize so I can buy some charms and not lose too many fights. But I'm in a very, very good spot this game. Because I'm basically, like, almost 40 gold. Uh, very rich. Uh, my Prismatic is paying dividends. And we're just going to try our best to uh, to stabilize a little bit harder. See, so I'm making 40, right? So even though I rolled a bunch of gold right now, it was just because I, I earned so much gold with this Wukong. Uh, with the uh, with the Mogul's Mail. I uh, probably shouldn't upgrade Bard. I'm kind of like half-assing two solutions here because I don't think I can fit in both Mage and Preserver, but it's okay. It's okay for now because I can always level for five Mage. Uh, but I'm trying to make a creative cookery board, right? I'm trying to cook a little bit. Um, obviously, the easier solution is just to roll on level eight and play Karma, especially if you have Spin to Win and your Wukong's already upgraded. It's pretty, it's pretty reliable to just play around those units instead. I got dropped another Wukong, which is insane, so I'm going to have Wukong 3 out of nowhere. But especially if you have this many Wukongs, 
Like I said, the Karma board is definitely a lot better. You can easily just drop these mages and play around Karma, but in my head, I'm like, eh, whatever. I'm just going to re-roll uh, Viger. It's pretty efficient rolling for me. So I'm resending it here. I'm just looking for upgrade. I really want to get a Viger too, just so I feel... Just so I feel like my damage is stabilized. So I'm rolling really deep here. Uh, I could sell a lot of units on my bench. Uh, to make Econ again, which is fine. I, I want to sell this Bard and play the Mordekaiser. Because the Mordekaiser gives me Vanguard to give a little bit of tankiness to this Galio. Um, and then I didn't really hit anything for this Wukong, so I just make Steadfast. Uh, I just want to make sure I win these fights because I'm pretty low HP. Right, The consequence of me getting so much money and having so much money to roll... Basically, I sent it down to like 20 or 30 gold two times in the last couple rounds. I have been rolling an insane amount. Uh, the, the reason is, is that like making all the econ thresholds and not playing a very strong board earlier is making us have very low HP. It's fine to be low HP, you just have to have a really strong out. Here I'm almost at Wukong 3. My board should be stable for most of stage 4 as well. And I just had more, I, I, I just had more faith in the mage variation than the the karma variation but like i said um i think if you're in a similar spot you should probably just play karma that's what i learned during this game uh i was kind of like yeah i think karma is probably better i think i even probably said it during the video i should put in uh no 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 just fucking get rid of the bard i mean i guess this is fine I'm keeping the Bard in for Preserver, but I already have Chrono as well, so I have a lot of healing. Chrono heals your team for 20% as well, so it actually synergizes pretty pretty alright. And then I just upgrade Zillion, I should hold on to the Viger. Yeah. It's not that bad, this board's fine, it's just not insanely good. Because ideally you want to lose, uh, you want to lose the Preserver and just play the 5 Mage. Even though the Wukong won't... Like, the Wukong won't out DPS everybody else, but the Wukong will be strong enough to be a frontline unit in addition to, like, your mage damage. So, it, it works out fine, right? You're basically just playing a plus one frontline unit that does a shit ton of damage. And that's the idea behind this board. Like I said, I think the Karma board is probably better. Uh, I just don't have much... Like, like I, I believe in the Karma board, I just don't have much faith rolling on level 8 because I feel like that's the only way I don't top 4, especially being low HP. I know there's a Karma right here in shop that I can easily switch between the Karma and play the other units, but it's like, eh, eh, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to do that for me at least. I'm one off Wukong, so I'll probably just send it here. Just trying it Wukong 3. I think that a lot of times, especially in the games, I always try and reroll something instead of leveling to play a 4 cost because I think every single time... Almost, I think all of my bot 4s that are like truly bad, like all my 7-8s are usually when I'm playing a 4 cost. I feel like the patch, the last couple patches, this patch as well as the previous patch, are just miserable if you're playing a, a 4 cost comp. Like unless you have the most insane spot for it that you're guaranteed top 4 with it, it is so bad. Every single time, if you have like even the shakiest of spots where you're like low HP or you're... Um, you don't have a lot of, like, you, like, I only want to play a, a level 8 board, like, I only want to roll on level 8 odds, if I have, like, 80 gold, level 8, uh, 50 HP, so I have multiple lives and I don't have to worry about it, and if I feel like I'm actually, like, giga, giga augments for, like, you know, like, like, what's it called? Um the thing uh best for, like what's what's the thing little buddies like if i have little buddies and i'm playing towards rise and i have 80 gold and good rise items that's the only time i like to roll on level eight because so many times i roll on level eight i don't hit anything and i just lose to all the rerollers anyways because i'm just not stable enough so here i really want to roll on level seven because even if the rest of my board is shit spin to win is so broken that wukong will carry me Wukong will literally carry me to the promised land. Also, there's a Wukong on carousel. So guess what? I have Wukong 3 now. So I'm just going to win, I guess. Um, obviously, I could do a little bit better. Like, obviously, my Wukong items are pretty bad. I don't have a single gargoyle. I have this moguls on him. I could rearrange the items later. It's very easy to get a, a magnetic remover in this set. Just because, like, you know, you just have to, um, you just have to, like, hit one of the, uh, one of the charms that gives it to you. But this Wukong will carry for most of the game. Uh, the Wukong spin to win is busted. If you have spin to win and you're rerolling Jinx, like obviously here I have to improvise because I didn't have Jinx items for most of the game. 
but if you get gifted spin to win when you're already playing wukong jinx and you have wukong and jinx items already uh you pretty much win on the spot it is so difficult to deal with so if you watch this wukong look at him he doesn't even have a gargoyle so it's not even like a really strong version of wukong the wukong has no support no preserver no nothing and he's just fucking deleting the whole board and that's why I'm just playing around mages, because in my head I'm like, okay, I can just reroll something else. When I buy a bunch of Vigors, it makes it easier to find Wukongs in the shop, because I'm thinning out the pool myself. And that was my th basically my thought process. So here, it's like I'm just going to keep rolling on level 7, and roll until I find a charm, and I'm just going to keep buying units. And as you can see, I'm very poor, right? I have very little gold. Uh, but mind you, I do have gold generation tools, so I could reestablish my econ very easily. Um, especially with this Wukong that pretty much never dies. Uh, and now I'm one off Viger, right? A Viger 3 is a Viger 3, right? I'd rather have Viger 3 than a Karma 2, and that's what I was thinking of uh, when I was playing towards this line. Now, obviously, like I said before, I say, I'm say i saying it multiple times in the video because 90% of the people that watch my content don't watch the whole video. And you might ask, how do you know that for sure? I see the YouTube metrics. Y'all watch the video for like 10 seconds at the end. Like, I can see where people watch the videos. There's a couple of you that watch the videos, and there's like 90% of you that just click around. So that's why I keep repeating myself, because I know that when people are going to see this, they're going to make comments about how you should have just played Karma, you should have just played this. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. But the reason, I, I made it very clear, I just like to roll on level 7. I'd rather have Viger 3 than Karma 2. Even if you give me, if you had the option to hand me a Karma 2 and a Viger 3, I would take the Viger 3 every day of the week. That's maybe me. Maybe it's wrong. I'm okay with being wrong. I think it's fine. My board is very strong also. I'm 4 mage, so I'm going to spike around 5 mage. 5 mage isn't that strong anymore, and obviously Viger got nerfed quite a bit, so this is a much weaker line. But I have 2 preserver in, and I have chrono in, and chrono recovers 20% of my, my team's HP. So I have like, you know, I'm not stacking vertical preserver, I'm not stacking vertical mage. I may kind of cooked up a board that kind of works well with this. As soon as I hit the Viger and the Vex, I'll level and play 5 mage. That's the plan. So I cap out around 5 mage, my Viger's gonna do a shit ton of damage, and the Wukong is gonna carry the slack for when I don't do the when I don't have as much. So here I'm hoping that I can maybe get a gargoyle and then I can switch the items over to the Wukong eventually. I don't hit anything. Uh, it's probably Nasher's Tooth, because Nasher's Tooth at least I can put on either Viger or Vex. Ah, you know what? This is fine too. Uh Viger 3, that's great for me. Uh we have a little bit of gold. We are pretty low cap, and I gained over Forger and Remover, so I'm totally down to uh to rearrange my items probably not this turn but if i make a gargoyles i can rearrange the wukong items later uh so here i just take anti-heal i would have taken nasher's just because i don't think anti-heal is that important because i have so much damage uh anti is more important when you need to like tank bust right when it's like hard to deal with like a tank unit but because i have so much damage in the form of the wukong the viger and the other units on my board i feel like i feel like it's fine but anti is always fine to make it's just that's just like resource management so i make morello uh, she, Nami's really good at, at slamming the Morello, uh, because she'll just hit everybody. Yeah, and now my Viker's doing a shit ton of damage. Uh, we're in a really good spot. Obviously, I, I can probably push levels now, because Vex is gonna come naturally. I don't need, uh, a Giga Frontline Vex unit at any point, because my Wukong is so stable. So we're gonna see. And very soon, we're gonna have the fun part of the video. Uh, which is, you know, the silly part. Uh, so here, uh, gain an artifact anvil. Uh, alright, so this is the lore accurate Wukong that I was talking about. So this is the funny part, uh, if you stayed this long. So here are my options, I'm gonna pause it. So Luden's Tempest is okay on Viger, uh, but it's not that great. Uh, I think it's kind of bait when you put on Viger, because I think it's like, assuming that you're gonna get the kill, and sometimes he doesn't, so then it just does nothing for a lot of the fight. Wit's End is kind of useless. Uh, but it could be really good on Wukong, I'm not sure about that. I checked the stats and it says it's pretty good. So that leaves Horizon Focus and Trench Coat. I think the correct answer is Horizon Focus, because you put it on Nami, and then Nami does like a shit ton of damage every time she casts. But the fun option is to take Trench Coat, which is what I'm going to do here. <laughs> so I just take Trench Coat. Now, I take Trench Coat because if you don't know, if you Trench Coat a hero unit, when they split, they are still the hero unit. So... I'm in a trench coat Wukong, and I think I make an I a mistake here when I slam my items. Uh, I should have put the moguls on him, but I think I put the steadfast. Yeah, that's my bad. 
Uh, okay, so I should put moguls on him because then I just get a way more gold because every time he splits, they all generate gold. But look at this Wukong, right? He's a little bit less tanky because now he doesn't have an extra tank item. But I get three Wukongs that all do a shit ton of damage. And watch, they're all going to start spinning. And look how hard this is to deal with. <laughs> Lore accurate Wukong cloning himself. Isn't that a thing? I was watching the, the new game that came out, like the Wukong game that came out. And that's like part of his skill set. Like, I don't know the whole legend because like I didn't, I didn't read the, the Journey to the West or whatever it's from, like the actual lore of Wukong. But it's so funny to me. Uh, so I took this for fun. Obviously, when I was talking on stream, I was like, yeah, Horizon Focus is obviously the right choice. Because Horizon Focus on Nami would basically just up my damage like incredibly. Because Nami stuns the whole board, so she'll just do everything. Uh, but this one I thought was funny. Now my items still aren't good. I should have put the Moguls on the Wukong. Because the Moguls on the Wukong would make it so that all my little mini Wukongs would also generate gold. So I would just get like an insane amount of gold every single turn if they all proc it. Uh, but in my thought process when I was thinking to myself... Is like I'd rather just have like a better tank item on him because I'm already losing a tank item by doing this meme build. Uh, but this is what it is, kind of like a meme. Uh, I, it's also much lower cap than I would have had if I had proper Wukong items. Uh, I might even lose some of these fights uh, against really strong boards. Like this guy has Xerath 2 on level 8. Uh, I think he's Golden Quest into Xerath, so you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so we lose against this guy. We might lose against some other people. Uh, but this was a funny video and I thought it would make a good YouTube content. Uh, these are the type of creative games where like, you know, sometimes you try and cook up stuff. Something you can always cook is Suspicious Trench Coat on hero units. I've done it with Elise, I've done it with lots of the hero units, because they retain their hero trait. So when they split off, they still do like a shit ton of damage, so long as you have like other good items on them. Uh, here I just take Nora for Nora. Sterix is also good on Wukong, so if I can switch the, uh... If I was able to switch the uh, the Steadfast off the Wukong, then I can also just put Sterix on Wukong for giving him more AD and just make him like an attack fighter instead. Uh, but that gave me a Nora 2. I want to level and play Nora 2. Oh, I just reforged the Sterix. That's also fine. I'm down to reforge Sterix here. Oh, I got IE. That's even worse. Oh, that's so much worse. Yeah, I just IE Nami. Oh, look how sad that is. I was probably bitching. Excuse me, I was probably bitching on stream. Uh, yeah, I just because it's a Nora too, I just lose the Bard for a turn. I'll put the Bard, I'll put Preserver back in another turn, but I don't really care. The five Mage is gonna be so much damage, and this Nora is also gonna be doing substantial damage, almost to a point where I should probably put the Nami items on the Nora because now I have Nora too. But we'll see. So as you can see, Wukong splits off, and he's gonna start spinning like crazy. Uh, all of them are going to spin and they're all going to do a shit ton of damage. It's going to be great. Obviously, my Viger is going to be doing the most damage because the Viger is three items, Viger three. Uh, Wukong still has like a frontline aspect to him where he's not going to do that much. But isn't that great? It's just silly. Uh, but, you know, for me at least, when I was looking at it, I saw Artifact Anvil. I said to myself, you know, I don't want to put an Artifact on Nami 1. I'd rather just like play around having the Wukong with the with the with the splitting because i thought it would be funny uh for stream at least so this is an example of like cooking and having fun uh whenever you cook always make sure that when you do something that's off meta obviously this is like for a silly uh concept uh it still has to work conceptually right it's not just like oh i'm gonna trench coat my nora because trench coat nora is gonna be a cool frontline unit it's like well doesn't make that much sense, right? But trench coating a hero augment unit and they split off and they all retain, as you can see, they all have the little border under them. They all turn into the hero Wukong. You run into a spot where, like, look at this board. I'm able to beat this guy because my Wukong, I just had three Wukongs that just swarmed his backline, right? It's still something that works. It's not necessarily the highest cap, most optimal way to play the game, but it's still fun. And I think these are the type of board, the type of ways you can find fun in some of these patches. Like I've been complaining that I hate this patch. I have very little fun. Uh, the games are very annoying to me a lot of the time. But at the same time, it's like you know, if you, if you run into situations like this, it might not be something that the stats say is incredible, but it's something that uh, you know, you can try out and still and still do well with it without having to like you know grieve the. Uh, unfortunate circumstances of not hitting units and stuff like that. I don't know how high I'm going to place. 
Uh, there's the Blade and High Roller with the, like, this, the guy that hit Golden, like, like, they need to fix that augment, by the way, this fucking, uh, what's it called? Golden Quest is so annoying. I get Spark so I can put on the Vex as well. And I think this is a lot more of a fun board than if I just played around Karma. I think Karma I had a great chance of losing as well, just because, like, you know, this Viger does so much damage with the Vex, even as a Viger, uh, Viger 2. I don't know if this is the, the Viger nerfed patch or not, though. I'm not 100% certain, because it's looking like it's a lot of damage, considering it's only 5 mage, but maybe it's just like the way people's boards are structured. This Golden Quest guy is just- Oh wait, this Golden Quest guy doesn't have an artifact, so this is the pre viger nerf. Okay, sorry, so this is the pre viger nerf. I still think it would work with Viger nowadays, by the way, because the damage isn't that important on this particular board, because I have spin to win. But, this is the pre- this is the previous patch, because there's no artifact on the- um, on this guy, Xerath 2. And because there's no artifact on the Xerath 2, it means that this was pre, pre-mage pre nerf. So this is where Viger 3 still has 3 AP scaling, right? I'm pretty sure we could have seen that if we looked, if I was paying attention right now. Well, that's fine. It's a top 3. Uh, that's the best we can do. Obviously, we don't even have a Gargoyle on our Wukong, right? It would have been nice if I had a Gargoyle. I'm holding on to this cloak. If I get the, um, if I get the, the charm that's like rearrange items on units, it would be really good because then I can make a gargoyle. Um, oh, I just buy the reroll one. Looking for Nami 2, I think. Or some sort of upgrades. This guy's also very strong. Unleash the Beast level 9, everybody upgraded. He has a Briar 2 with a Pyro Spat. Oh, we'll see. I, I could actually beat a lot of these boards. Like, look at, look at this Wukong, how much, uh, how hard it is to deal with. Especially against this Kalista. This might even be a first if, um, if it wasn't for the Golden Quest guy, I'm pretty sure I can go first in this lobby. It's just the Golden Quest guy caps so high. Ooh, Helldyne becomes Radiant for a round. I also have IE on Nami. I have Infinity Edge Nami. It's so silly. Also, I'm always putting Yumi on Viger because Viger, if Viger randomly gets sniped by some backline damage, I lose the round on the spot because Viger is. Bro, I bought the Radiant item and it made Radiant IE. Like, come on. Oh, that's probably how I lose this game. I probably lose right now because my Nami just doesn't do anything. And I, out of all the items it could have hit, it hits the worst item out of all of them. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, okay. Let's watch, though. Wukong already split. Yeah, I think I think the Xerath just has too much damage for me. But yeah, the, you see how the Viger is still living? So I survived the Xerath cast uh, because of the Yumi on the Viger. That's why you all... I, I remember somebody was asking me, why wouldn't you put it on the... Uh, why wouldn't you put it on Wukong? I think it was during this exact uh, this exact game. Why don't you put Yumi on Wukong? And what I, what I told them is like... What I told the chatter was, look at a lot of these fights. Right? A lot of these fights, the Viger is dying first anyways. And the, the Viger is doing the most damage on the board. So it makes more sense to have the Yumi give extra damage to the Viger as well as some healing to the Viger. Because it doesn't really matter if my Wukong lives or not. What matters more is if I, um, how do I phrase it? What matters more is if I, uh, what matters more is if my Viger lives long enough to do enough damage to win the game. Also, I don't even, why did I put in Morgana over this guy? I guess it's, I guess it's only Bard 1. So it makes sense. So in a lot of these fights, if you watch the way the fight boils down, the Wukong lives till the end. So upping the Wukong damage and upping the Wukong dura like like survivability doesn't matter as much as making sure that my Viger isn't getting sniped randomly and I just lose the fight because I don't have enough damage. So that usually when you have Yumi, you're very rarely putting the Yumi on a frontline unit for that reason. Uh, if your frontline unit is dying too fast, that's a separate issue. That just means that your board is ass, that your frontline is dying so fast. Like this fight, my, my guy died too soon. I think this guy just capped out his board. He had too many five cost upgrades. I lost this one fight. Uh, a little bit unfortunate. I think, is this also the Radiant IE fight? I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, but we'll take a second. Uh, obviously, like spin to win is very broken. So here I'm playing a very suboptimal spin to win board. Obviously, if you just played Wukong with Jinx, uh, with the same setup, you'd probably, you'd probably almost always go first. It's very, very strong. Uh, I did a little bit of a meme build for fun. Obviously, we try and have some fun in this house occasionally. 
Uh, and it worked out because uh, Suspicious Trench Coat with Hero Augments is like a synergy that you can kind of always kind of uh, put together and it just kind of slots itself in. Uh, versus this guy, like look at the board that I lost to. Like I deserve to lose to this board. Uh, Camille 2, Diana 2, Morgana 2, Xerath 2. Like, what the fuck is this? This guy's like 5 Arcana. Like what the? Or 4 Arcana. Like hello? That's a high roll board. Uh, but anyways, uh, we made it work. And yeah, hopefully it was fun and enjoyable. Uh, obviously, you know, I didn't get the W this game, but you know, if you play around Jinx, and you, or if you don't get Jinx items, you can play this setup, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. It's a little bit more temperamental. You have to hit Viger 3, Vex 3, and Wukong 3, so you need a lot of gold. Um, if you if you don't have enough gold and you want to play AP with the Wukong, I would suggest playing around Karma, uh, but that's a little bit temperamental because obviously you have to hit the Karma and then you have to Wukong 3 on level 8, so it's a little bit more risky. Uh, in that sense, but typically you'll just play around Jinx and that'll be your most successful game. Uh, anyways, thank you for watching. Hopefully it was an enjoyable game and have fun in your own lobbies. And you can try out Hero Augments with Trench Coat and tell me how it goes. Um, like, you know, I've done this before with like, what's her name? Elise, it works really well. Uh, Lilia, it works really well, etc. Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.